I have been bombarded by emails, SMSs, telephone calls, etc., etc., all asking me one question. Chris, is it true that Gideon Moy is meeting with Deputy President William Samoy Ruto today? Yeah, at Ruto's office. Now, let me confess, when I received the first uh, query on this, it took me totally by surprise. I said, Allah, I'm not aware. And the response was predictable. Chris Bwana, check your sources. Eh? Check your sources. I'll call you in five. <laughs> and even before I could say anything more, they disconnected. Yeah, and true to their word, five minutes later, they're on the phone again. Chris Bwana, wamesema nini? <laughs> now I'll tell you where I'm laughing and I'll also look into this issue tell you what I found out yeah, uh, later on in this video but first let's start with the things I will not comment on I will not make any commentary <laughs> on the BBC broadcaster Danny Baker who has been fired yeah why because he has portrayed, he has insinuated, yeah, that his royal highness, a heir very far down the line, but still nevertheless a heir to the British crown. A man just a few days old called Archie Harrison Mountbatten Winslow. Phew, <laughs> quite a name. This BBC Karipota. <laughs> made an insinuation that Bwana Mountbatten Owensa yeah, has got some close links to a chimpanzee. Very racist to it, actually. I guess in his mind, it was meant to be a joke. Yeah, but BBC said no. Fired. I will not say anything, despite the fact that very many Brits seem to have a problem. Yeah ever since the engagement was announced between Prince Harry, Mtoto Mdogo was the late Prince Diana, yeah, and Meghan, yeah, an American who is not exactly white. That announcement imezidisha racist jokes in the UK, yeah, against the royal family. And it seems when this latest addition to the royal family was born just a few days ago, most Brits were most concerned at Atoka Kalagani. <laughs> now, my apologies. I know I'm laughing and I shouldn't laugh. Because in case you didn't know, I myself have been a victim yeah, of racism. And it's not a laughing matter. The truth is, I lost it. Yeah, and I rarely do. But the good news is, Nilimshinda Akili na Nkamshinda Nguvu. It was actually on a rugby pitch and was supposed to be playing for the same club. Many years ago when I was a young man, yeah, but I've never forgotten, yeah, but I have forgiven. I know that may be a contradiction, yeah, because when you forgive, you're supposed to forget. Anyway, I've already said too much on a subject I'd promised to say nothing. <laughs> you know, it's very unfortunate that some of us uh, Kenyans are brainwashed. Yeah, we still believe Mzungus are superior. And I know there are some who when a Mzungu makes a chimpanzee joke on them, they will laugh along. Especially people who belong to the generation of my political lecturer. My political lecturer, for instance, had too much respect for Mzungus. So much so that one day he was very close to being called by a Mzungu. It's just lucky for him, he thought to call one of his sons and ask. And he missed being conned by a mzungu by a whisker. Anyway, something else I'm not going to talk about is the funeral of multi-Tanzanian billionaire Reginald Mengi, who is being buried today at his home in a place called Machame. Now, Forbes uh, estimated uh, when Reginald uh, Mengi is worth at about 560 million US dollars. Now, that is chicken feed, yeah, small change, believe it or not, when it comes to some of Kenya's billionaires. However, there's a big difference. Reginald Mengi earned it legitimately through working hard, 
Yeah. But the billionaires we have here, we know. <laughs> I won't say any more. But of course the interest being attracted to the funeral of the late Mengi yeah, is not on the fallen billionaire. No. It's on his widow. Yeah, his young widow. 40 year old Jacqueline Mengi. Now the late Reginald was 76. Yeah, and his wife is about 40 years old. So that is, that is an age difference of uh, 36 years. And the fact that uh, Mrs. Mengi is a stunner. Yeah, she used to be a musician, very well known musician, who sang quite a lot of popular hits. And her stage name in those days was Kayleen. But of course that part of her life is not highlighted in her biography. What is highlighted is her passion for interior design. Well, now she controls the Mengi billions yeah, and his empire yeah, in Tanzania and beyond. My very serious advice to Mrs. Mengi is beware of young, handsome Kenyans. <laughs> and I'm serious. Anyway, let's get down to some serious business. The leading universities in Kenya are broke. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The Kenyatta University is in the red for over 2 billion yeah, Kenya shillings, followed closely by the University of Nairobi, who in the last financial year made a loss of 1.4 billion Kenya shillings. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. In other words, yeah, what this says, any uh, financial expert will tell you, our leading universities are technically bankrupt. Gosh, how did that even happen? Universities are supposed to be the fountain of knowledge. Yeah, and therefore there's supposed to be a lot of wisdom in the management of their finances. But apart from mismanagement, which I will cover in a second, yeah, there's also been a lack of creativity. I mean, let's get serious. Give any half-baked marketer the brand name University of Nairobi and they'll deliver hundreds of billions easily. And I don't think that point is debatable. But even more interesting are the half-baked excuses, yeah, which is really grasping at straws, that have been given by the management of the Nairobi University for the huge loss. These are the reasons they give. A decline in remittances from the parent ministry. I mean, <laughs> I mean, surely, surely, they did see that coming. Number two, another lame excuse given, is a decline in the enrollment of uh, people into the parallel program. You know the parallel program, where you don't qualify to enter the university, but you have uh, the basic uh, minimum qualifications, and therefore you enroll, yeah, and you pay a fortune yeah, to get a university education. In sharp contrast to your government-financed yeah, fellow students who had top marks. Now, if I can give you some quick inside information, that is really not inside information because many people know, the parallel program of the universities <laughs> has been full of politics. I think even some people have died. <laughs> you know what happened is that the deal was, if you're a lecturer for one of these parallel uh, courses, you get a percentage of the fees paid by the students. You get a percentage from each and every student. So you can imagine a class which has got over 500 uh, people, yeah, and you're earning a hefty commission from each and every one of those students in your class. There are complaints, yeah, of some lecturers being sidelined, yeah, to be involved in these programs. Others bribing their superiors to be included. Now, in such an environment, do you expect anybody to sit down and do some careful planning ahead? Yeah, or projecting possible students in future? Or even some serious marketing to even get more students? No way! Everybody at the university behaved like this parallel program gravy train would last forever. And as we all know, nothing lasts forever. Now it just beats me. If some illiterate guy who never went to school already knows that in life, nothing lasts forever, especially good things, yeah, why doesn't a university lecturer, yeah, managing a program at the University of Nairobi, know that? <laughs> Why? Now, I know some may have a different view, but in my view, 
it is a great shame for the biggest universities in Kenya to be broke. It is very embarrassing for every Kenyan. And in my view, heads must roll. Yeah, the government must look very seriously into those managing our universities. Yeah, maybe they have uh, grown too old and maybe some of them have stopped thinking properly. <laughs> maybe what we need is some young blood. Yeah, and we have plenty of people who are more than capable of running our national universities very efficiently. Yeah, and they're very capable Kenyans out there, jobless, who I'm sure can do a much better job than the jokers yeah, who have uh, put our public universities into this kind of shame. Now on to the Gideon and Ruto Manenos. Now at the time of making this video, I had not yet been able to confirm whether the really this is true, whether really Gideon met Deputy President William Ruto. Despite the very strong indications that such a meeting was actually taking place yeah, earlier today. I say indications because I can confirm that these reports were more than rumors. You know how rumors uh, go. People just give you information. Yeah, and they can't qualify what they're saying. But uh, I've received some very credible information yeah, that may, yeah, I've chosen my words very carefully, that may suggest that this meeting actually took place. But you know our farm rule on this channel, yeah, I will not tell you something actually happened unless it is confirmed by at least two independent sources, especially when it's something as controversial as this. And as uh, I'll be very honest and I'll be very open, by the time I made this recording, I had not yet received yeah, a confirmation from two independent sources. But what I can tell you is that it is more than a rumor, which means that the likelihood of it being true are extremely high. So what I want us to do is to focus on why would Gideon Moy want to meet with Deputy President William Ruto? Why? For what purpose? Now, number one, the handshake principles have been very quiet. Wamenyamaza kama mtungi amaji. Now, this is not good news. Yeah, because when politicians are quiet, <laughs> you have a lot to get worried about. They are scheming. They are doing backroom deals. Yeah, and most of these deals will not benefit a vast majority of Kenyans. Yeah, many times when politicians are quiet, they may also be closing ranks. Yeah, they have identified a threat which affects all of them right across the political divide, and they're closing ranks. Yeah, because when push comes to shove, politicians will always defend each other. So already, there you have a possible reason for arch rivals, yeah, bitter political enemies, Gideon Moy and uh, William Ruto, to meet for a discussion. Number two, it could be a devious political play. Yeah, what do I mean? Right now, it's no secret, yeah, DP William Ruto has been uh, cornered. Things are not good for him. It is no secret that his ranks have shrunk tremendously. And politics is very dirty. Sometimes uh, your opponent may want to kick you when you're on the ground. And sometimes kicking in the stomach when you're already on the ground, you're reeling in pain, will not be so obvious. It may involve a false attempt yeah, at peace. Persuade you to make a deal that would actually seal your political fate. Pretend to make a peace deal with you when actually the last nails <laughs> are being nailed into your coffin <laughs> as this so-called peace meeting is uh, taking place. The long and short of what I'm saying is that there are many possible reasons why Gideon would want to meet D.P. William Ruto right now. But I want to finish with the most likely reason, yeah, based on information that I've received. The likelihood is very high that the two Rift Valley politicians have been ordered to put their house in order. They have been told that this campaigning is getting too much. Yeah, and this uh, rivalry in the Rift Valley 
this war in the Rift Valley between these two Rift Valley kingpins has become cumbersome. It has become too much. Therefore, it is time yeah, to bury the hatchet, yeah, at least to declare ceasefire, yeah, because we are so far away from an election. Now, that may sound a bit far-fetched to some of you until you consider the following fact. And what fact is that? It is the fact that Kenya is in very serious financial problems. Yeah, the government of Kenya is in very serious financial problems, which is no secret. However, the situation has been made a lot worse by the fact that the financing, which was expected from the Chinese, did not come through. Now, I can already hear some naive Kenyans saying, oh, come on, now get out of here, Chris. That financing was for the railway. Yeah, it was for the SGR. How can you say that money was badly needed by the government, yet it was earmarked for the SGR? Well, let me give you a very simple example. Yeah, you're in very serious financial problems. Or think to the time when you're in very serious financial problems. Yeah, you're living from hand to mouth. If money comes in for a certain purpose, are you going to get very strict yeah, about what uh, that money was budgeted for? No way. Any money that comes in is badly needed yeah, to sort out emergencies. And going forward, you're going to be able to replenish it from other sources. That is the way things work. Yeah? And therefore, if you are to believe what I've just told you, then what it means is that the government is in a very serious financial emergency. Yeah, it's completely dry of funds and therefore is in a kind of crisis. As the popular saying goes, when your house is on fire, yeah, you will stop doing everything else. You will stop all the internal squabbles and put out the fire first. Yeah, and then you'll sort out each other later. After you have successfully put out the fire. Now, there are some very interesting pointers yeah, that may suggest that this is exactly what is going down. Tim Keleweke have toned down tremendously. Yeah, they even had to cancel a meeting at the 11th hour, which was scheduled for Kakamega last Saturday. It never took place. Now, I can't remember the last time yeah, such a major rally was cancelled. I can't. You'll need to assist me. It is not something normal. Therefore, in that kind of environment, Gideon meeting Deputy President William Ruto yeah, to declare a ceasefire yeah, and also to discuss ideas on how to assist to put out the fire yeah, that is engulfing the whole of Kenya would make sense, at least to me. Folks, let's stay alert for the telltale signs. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha. Thank you.